Hello. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about layers of oil and water in a porous medium. And what that means in terms of the trapping of oil and water in the pore space and what it means in terms of fluid flow. And it turns out it's a really very important concept. So let me illustrate, to begin with schematically, what it is we're talking about. So here is an illustration of a potential displacement sequence. And we're showing sort of in cross-section an idealized pore that's triangular in shape. I'm going to show some real x-ray images, you know, what the rock really looks like. This helps understand the process. So we begin with part A here, with a rock that's entirely saturated with water. So this would be an oil reservoir before the oil moves in, or uh, an aquifer for CO2 storage. Then what happens, and in this example it's going to be oil, oil moves into the reservoir. It's a primary drainage process with the reservoir is formed. Okay, the water is the wetting phase. The water is retained in the nooks and crannies and the small pores in these layers, shown here in grey. Okay. The oil itself may contain some surface active components. So over time, and there's geological time to play with here, those surface active components could adhere to the solid surface. And they render that surface oily. They render it more oil wet. And what this can mean, therefore, is that then subsequently when we inject water to displace oil, when we're trying to recover oil from our reservoir, we can just push the oil out. And that's, that's what's shown in part C. But part D is more interesting because what can happen is the water is now the non-wetting phase. It doesn't like the surface. It moves into the center of the pore space. The oil likes the surface. It clings to the surface here and forms an oil layer. Now, the interesting thing here is the water in the corners is bulging out. There's this hinging angle, but it can't move across the oily surface because it's now oil wet. Now we have some interesting phenomena. If we had a water wet system, we wouldn't see these oil layers and the water would be able to move in and out of the corner. So as you inject water, the layers would swell. So the water reasonably well connected and can flow. Here, the water in the corners is pinned, it's confined right in the narrow regions where it's pushed at the end of primary drainage. So in fact, it doesn't flow very regularly. You only get rapid water flow when the water in the centers of the pore space is then connected. Now let's look at the oil. In the water wet system, the oil can get trapped in the big pores. Here, what happens is the oil is retained in these layers, clinging to the pore space. And so it's more difficult to trap the oil. It's not impossible. Eventually, these layers can collapse. Indeed, we've shown here, there's no layer here. And this layer, another push from the water, and that, that layer will collapse. So oil can be trapped, but there's less trapping because it's, it's clinging to the surface. Last thing. I'm using the word layer. The typical thicknesses of these oil and water layers are a few microns. They therefore allow some flow. So there can be flow through these layers. This is to distinguish them from a film. Now a film, in my mind, is something that is microscopic in thickness, stabilized by intermolecular interactions, and is normally of nanometer thickness. And indeed, technically speaking, it's a water film on this surface that collapses to allow oil to contact the solid. So films affect interfacial properties, no doubt about it, but they are too thin to allow any significant flow. So when I use a layer, I'm talking about something that's micron thickness that allows flow. Okay, very interesting schematically, but uh, you know, what do we really see? So here are some X-ray images inside a rock that has been made oil wet. Okay, there's initial brine, so the brine is in the nooks and crannies of the pore space, and then we inject water. So the top layer there of pictures are two dimensional cross sections through three dimensional images, so in what we might call the raw image, the raw x ray absorption. And here, what we have is we have the brine here is in this gray color, the lighter gray is the rock, okay, and the oil is actually the darker color. And the picture I want to focus on is this third one here. We've injected water. The water has gone in the center of the pore space. It actually bulges out 
into the oil, it's at higher pressure. We still have water that's initially retained in the corners. And in fact, that water basically doesn't move. It doesn't allow really much flow. And in between is this sandwiched oil, a sandwich between water in the corners and water in the center. What's shown below is a three-dimensional rendering of this, this S layer, this sandwich layer of oil that you see retains connectivity of the oil. So these oil layers allow you to reach a low residual saturation because they retain connectivity. The brine, in this case, salty water that was injected, that will only be able to flow, will only have a reasonable relative permeability when the brine in the centers of the pore space is connected. The wetting layers, the original wetting layers, which are now pinned layers of water, are, retain a very small thickness, and so they lead to a low water relative. So that's about flow. Now let's consider what it means for trapping. Now, if you've got a water wet rock, and we've seen this in a previous video, the more non-wetting phase, in this case oil or CO2, you put into the rock, the more you're going to trap because you put more in, they occupy more pores, so they're more places for them to get trapped from, obvious from what I thought. In a mixed wet medium, we see something the different. What we see is on the left is just a corner of the pore space where the initial oil saturation is very high. So we pushed oil into most of the pore space. The water's confined in a very narrow layer in the corner. Now, when we inject water, the water fills the center of the pore space. So that's what's shown here. We have a nice thick oil layer. Now, as we inject more water, the water squeezes down that oil layer. But if it's nice and thick, that is stable. It retains connectivity of the oil. So we really have to push a lot of water in to collapse these films and allow, sorry, there's layers uh, to allow the oil to become trapped. It is possible, eventually, you can collapse layers and there can be some oil retained in a small pore and all the layers around it have collapsed. You can see that's difficult. Now let's take the other case. Here we haven't put much oil in in the first place. The initial oil saturation is lower. That means there's more water in the corners initially. So now when water goes in, right, there's a lot of water in the corners, there's not so much corner left for the oil, the oil layer is thinner, and so it's much easier to collapse. And so as a consequence, you're going to get uh, oil layer collapse earlier, consequence potential for more trapping. So you get this rather bizarre situation is you put more in, but you trap more. So there's less oil to trap in the first place, but you're actually trapping more. So do we see this? And the answer is, uh, yes, we do. Here are some poor flood experiments, so sort of cause and about this size, okay, that have been performed uh, on a mixed wet sample. What's shown at the top of some experiments by uh, Yuki Tonino, who's now at the University of Aberdeen, that was done in uh, my group at Imperial College. And what's shown on the bottom is a, a replotting by Yuki of some of Salafiel's classic work in the literature. And what we see here is what's shown on the y-axis is how much oil is, is, remains in the, in the rock. And what's shown here is the initial oil saturation. And we have a series of different curves because in a mixed wet system, you continue very, very slowly to produce oil as more and more water is injected. So we're inject injecting more and more water and obviously the saturation is slightly slightly. Okay, if it was a mixed wet, uh, sorry, water wet rock, we'd expect you know, more, more oil in, initial oil saturation is higher, more is trapped. Now the curves are quite complex here, but they obviously have to start from zero. If you don't put anything in, nothing gets trapped. So eventually the curve must go up. But what you see is the curves then go down again. And what this means is I put more oil in, but I'm trapping less. And that must be due to the stability of these oil layers. Eventually you put so much oil in, you see the initial oil saturation here heads to one, you essentially fill all the pore space. And now obviously you get the maximum amount of trapping. So there's a maximum, let's say, trapping potential. So quite complex graphs, but the interesting thing is the presence of these oil layers not only allow you to get to relatively low remaining saturations, you see here in the experiment, we're getting down below 20%, more like 10%, but you get this non-monotonic trend with initial saturation, which is really quite strange. So that really concludes what I was going to say. You have layers of both water and the water layers actually retain connectivity of the water. And in a water wet system, 
are the principal reason why you get trapping the non-wetting phase in the center of the pore space. If you have a mixed wet system, you can also get these layers of oil. They prevent trapping the pore. They also have some significant impacts on flow. They actually constrain the flow of water in, in the water layers, um, but the flow of oil is also itself quite low. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is to show the consequences for that for relative permeability and oil recovery. So thank you very much.